Well, last week was media day for the Iowa men's basketball team. Some key pieces missing from last season, mainly Tyler Cook and Nicholas Baer. Adam Rosso talked with head coach Fran McCaffrey about how the group is looking so far. Last year we made a dramatic improvement at the defensive end, and I think that needs to continue. And that also means on the glass. If you limit them to one shot, they're going to shoot a lower percentage. It gives you more opportunities to run the fast break, how we like to play. I think we have a team that was recruited for that in mind. And I think we have a team that can get out and run and make good decisions and move the ball and attack the defense, get good shot opportunities, and because we have a lot of shot makers. Talk to Jordan a little bit. What's your kind of ideal timetable? He said, you know, I can play four, I can play 12, we can do whatever. But what's your ideal timetable of once he responds to that? Well, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see till he actually can get out and attempt to practice. Right now, he's just kind of working out on his own. So I don't even think you can have any plan whatsoever until he's ready to go out there and try to fight through a screen and drive to the hole, get knocked down, get back up. I mean, he's as tough a kid as I've ever coached. But he's going to have to go through that before we can even think about what plan might be in place for him to play. So when you're preparing without him, is it just simple lineup tweaks, or do you change X's and O's knowing he might not be on the team? No, it's just lineup. Yeah, lineup tweaks. We'll put different guys in different spots and get them ready. Where do you think Joe, besides the local leadership you talked about, needs to go with, with his game in this next step? This year? He just needs to be the guy that you know takes games over, knows that you know he has that ability. We have confidence in him and that ability. We're going to go to him. He's got the green light. He's always been an efficient guy, so if he misses three or four in a row, you know, shoot five more, uh, be that guy, uh, and I think without question, he can do that. How do you think teams change the way they play him this year now that he probably is the number one? Option? Well, you know, he'll just, he's just getting a lot more attention. He'll get doubled a little more often. He'll get the other team's best wing defender, be a little more physical with him. But he's ready for that. I mean, he's physically strong. And had a great summer in the weight room, looks good. Uh, you know, he kind of saw that in AAU and in high school. I mean, he saw more double and triple teams in high school, than I think, than LeBron James did. So I'm not, I'm not worried about him there. How about the Nicholas Bear role? Not a guy you can easily replace. You said that last year a couple of times. How do you find somebody that can do something? I don't know that you ever find anybody that does everything that Nicholas Bear did. Uh, you hope to find people that collectively can you know, produce the number of threes, the number of offensive rebounds, the number of loose ball recoveries. Uh, he's just a guy that was able to affect the game in a very unique way, whether it be on the glass, as an offensive player, as a hustle guy. You know, you look, as soon as you look at him as, well, he's just a hustle guy that's going to die on the floor, you know, he'll, he'll get 20. And say, well, he's just one of the best players on the floor. And then he'll help you with his ball handling or his passing. He won't shoot it as much. Those guys are really hard to find. Do you use that as an example? Do you pull up from bear tape? Like, I think of the Tennessee offensive rebound, the tap out, and the block in the corner. Do you, do you have that example to say, hey, this, is, this is what we need from, from somebody out there? Yeah, I mean, anybody that was on the team last year knows that. We'll obviously see a lot of tape from last year and talk about that. And... I think we have some, some options there. It doesn't have to be somebody that plays exactly the way he does. Uh, but you know, can, can Joe Toussaint, Bakari, Connor, Patrick, I mean, right on down the line, can those guys effectively accumulate the kind of statistics that Nichols Bear produced? We talked about the schedule a little bit. Selection Sunday aside, do you, do you like that having the challenge to see? Not only where the teams at, but where individual guys respond to some, some unique challenges. And I think more importantly, uh, how do they respond coming back after a big win or a tough loss early in the season? Because that's what you've got to be able to do in the Big Ten. The last thing, no, you know, no TC inside. And I don't know if this, the extension of a three-point line, does that help a team like you guys when you want to go inside out? You think there's more room for Ryan? Well, as long as you have bigs that can shoot and stretch the floor, it definitely does. And, and we have that. Very, very few teams, I would think, have three guys that are better than 6'10 that can all make threes. How do you envision it being a little bit different without 
Tyler when you insert a guy like like Nunji or, or like Greener versus what? Well, it's just they're he's they're completely different players. I mean, Tyler Cook was able to do some things athletically that very few other people could do. That's why he's in the NBA. We'll miss that. Jack's a little different player. He can shoot threes and 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 you know maybe maybe block a few more shots because he's 6'11 with a 7'3 wingspan. We'll see. Uh, but he'll have that opportunity.